Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about the Silver Age ban list and a little bit about the upcoming Black Panther set, going over some of these Scott Porter unboxing videos. This is episode 537. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Do you really want to do you really want to click set? Leadership. Roll a six, make a move extreme. Token up. Take an action from your team. I go straight to your start. Hypersonic speed. Roll a five. Getting brave, hitting blades, cross fangs. Hey, yo. Stick and move, click a few just to hit a stop. Need a three CCE on a flurry close. Tear your dials apart. Once the timer starts. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sale products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to go to shop.wizkids.com, pick up some of those online exclusives, you can use code dial H10 for 10% off your order there. Not available with certain promotions or pre-orders or iconics. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? Yo, 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 new hero clicks, new news. What more can you ask for? That is exactly right. So, what made you happy this last week, my man? So I went to a concert last night. I've already told you guys about that, but it was fantastic. It was really, really good live. Uh, the crowd, too. Everyone was just on the same page. You know, no one was acting wild. There was no just like stupid, heinous stuff going on. Okay. People were just enjoying the music. Cool. They were there for it, clearly. And yeah, it was just a really good time. Still Woozy was incredible live. Took some time after the show to like come up to all the fans and talk with them, too, which I always appreciate that, but... I was worried he wasn't going to play all the hits. He played all the hits, and then some, and then some. His openers were solid, too. But on top of that, I got to actually play some Hero Clicks today as well. Oh, no way. Yeah, Luke came over, and we, you know, played a few. So the teams that I played, first I played a little Justice League team. Nothing fancy there, but got to play the new Rare Flash for Masters of Time. He's a lot of fun. A four through six shape change, and afterwards you get to place within five in line of fire. So there's one turn where yeah. I hit like three shape changes, so I just, <laughs> just zip it around. All the way around. He is so much fun to play. When I finally like, really when sick. I first saw him, I was like, ah, I don't really get him. And then you were really big on him during the set review, and then I played I like him, him and lot. I was like, yeah, he is a ton of fun. I don't have to feel like an evil man anymore because I always reached for Wonder Woman eighty Flash. I'm like, well, there's not really another an Flash to play right man. now, so this is a more acceptable one in a casual way. The next match, I played five shifting focus Batman, so just a full team of them. And at one point, I switched into Double Gunslinger, had the enhancement from the Witch Hunter, so just dirty. nuked Luke's like whole team. It was it was great. And then in the final match, I played the Black Lanterns as like a team for the first time ever with mm. the new uh, the new Prime you think Swamp thing. Honestly, my my stance on them is still largely the same. I wasn't playing them like very competitively. What I learned the most from all of it is that Necron is crazy. I, I knew sure. Necron was good because, like, oh, we saw him, like, shine in pulp. Like, he's amazing. But I, I didn't really think, like, he was that good. But when he gets healing, he is so quickly, like, a 12 for 4 with Psychic Blast. He's healing up your whole team. He's blasting. It's just crazy. But, yeah, Swamp Thing, I went in. I, I think I killed, like, I don't even know, a, a pretty just nothing factor piece on Luke's team. And then he just got nuked. And I was like, oh, I... I thought he'd live longer for some reason. <laughs> I thought he was. I thought he'd be tankier. Same deal with Batman. He goes in. He does his little trick. He dies. That's you know you expect yeah. that. But then uh, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, okay. and Necron were able to carry me out. Primarily Necron, because with Green Lantern you get a plus one to your willpower roll. If yeah. you're in a grave marker, he's already colossal. Oh. So every turn it was like if I Anything don't roll a one. one. So it was just blast, 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 blast. And, uh, yeah, Green Arrow is also pretty fun where it's like, oh, well, I'm in Hindering. I have a plant marker, so I'm actually a plus three. I was like, no, you don't get any modifiers. <laughs> so they were very fun, but the Black Lanterns as a whole, I know people are experimenting a lot with Prime Swamp thing. Bring it to the table. I'm interested. Again, this was, like, very, very casual play, but uh, I don't know. I'm still not, like, super impressed by them, but they are very fun, and Necron is... Yeah, dude, I didn't know. I didn't know he was, like, that good. Oh, really? <laughs> He's so good. Yeah. So if there's anything no, I Necron's took away, gnarly. Necron Ugh. is, 
yeah, a little dirty. He's he's definitely what what gives them some legs to stand on. And I just did not. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't know that. Yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know you were chill seeing, like that. Seeing is believing and all that, putting it uh, pen to paper, everything. Do you believe in Necron? <laughs> Apparently you don't. Classic. I do. I mean, I've seen it in action. I don't want to play him. Like he's definitely not my style of like figure that I want to play yeah. necessarily. But I've seen him wreck house. Yeah, plenty he of times. Crazy. Dude. Shout out. Shout out, Brendan, our, one of our locals. There's like loves Black Lanterns constantly. Oh, that's him. true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Now he reps Necron. Hard. I don't think. Uh, uh, also, just to close that off, not a single team I played today had leadership, and I was just like, ah, whatever. And it was fine. We <laughs> that's went so funny. But I played against the Prime Blue Beetle too. Which what was, was the funny. what was the win loss? You guys played three games, yeah. So three and zero. Three zero. Dang. The Black Lantern one was scary. Like I went in with Swamp Thing and Batman. Yeah, him with, dying right away is scary. But yeah, so you see, he pulled just it through. Lost 115 points and like literally Necron just turned into like a death ray. Like I KO'd like one more thing, healed him up a little bit more, and then it was just every turn just 12 for four, 12 for four, 12 for four, 12 for four. And it's like, well, he can't keep up. And it was also insane because I had the bonus on the willpower rolls for Green Lantern. Green Arrow had willpower, and the Necron has a two through six willpower. So they're all a four through six willpower if they're in a grave marker, which they pretty much always were. So every turn it was just willpower, willpower, willpower. I was hitting all of them. It's like you can't keep up at that point. So it was. I had a blast. I don't nice. know how Luke. He probably did okay. You know. Enjoying the he, new stuff, playing he, Master of Time. He's just having a good time, at least. The first match was. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to win to have fun. It's true. Yeah. Um, it was funny. I like so. Like, I obviously want to play the shifting Batman to shift, right? You want yeah. to bring them all in, but I had his whole team like locked down with Omega Batman. So I was just like, ah, screw it. I'm gonna leave him in. I just kept poisoning him, and so that game did not go well for him. Okay. And what ended up happening? Yeah, that one might be an unfun <laughs> game. Maybe. I was like, all right, well, you know, this is probably going my way. Like you're double token. I'm gonna poison you again next turn. So I was like, I'll pulse wave. And I crit hit the pulse wave, killed two of my own figures, killed two of his, and then that turned out uh, I ended up K- KOing more points of my team than he did. <laughs> oh, really? That's so, so funny. Omega Batman is also a blast. The shifting focus Batman, I'm confident that you can make them work competitively. But anyway, got to enjoy some clicks. Calder, how about yourself? Nice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we filmed episode four, slightly out of order, of the Baseball League show that you'll, I guess, hear a little bit more about later. Um, but that was just a ton of fun. So the whole show had this kind of really silly premise on, it's kind of a mockumentary. So it's about this baseball team that gets kind of caught up in all these like different social aspects. And mostly people are just like, hey, can I just play baseball? And it's like, that's kind of like the straight man to, to the wackiness of the show. It's like, there's like a, a Michael Scott character who's just always getting in the way of like the actual practice, the actual work. You know, he's just doing something something weird and wacky um and the episode just really ends with this really like heartfelt uh game of catch between me and one other character and i'm just like wow this is like kind of a step back from all like the goofiness that we were kind of doing and now it's this very just like kind of meaningful oh hey we understand each other on a better like level on a, it's like on a baseball on diamond. A, on, a, on a baseball diamond and we understand just like the thing that we're passionate about despite our differences all that jazz i'm like oh this is actually like a really fun I just had a blast filming that episode everybody on set all the crew is so nice all my fellow actors and everything they're just super talented and we added a new new actor yeah yeah steven steven was like it was his first or second day on set my first day working with him and he just absolutely brought just a great energy to the set so i had just a ton of fun so shout out that was just a blast and i can't wait for that to be seen early 2025 spring ish 2025 this one's might be faster than some of my other projects musical number in this one there's not a musical number in this one i don't is that a Oh I no, 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 no! I was like, "What is that a reference to?" No, it is. There's the no dumbest thing ever. Yeah, there's no High School Musical esque uh, no, dance scene. You're not Troy. I'm definitely not Troy. No, dang. No, Corbin, sadly, I'm Corbin sadly Blue? I'm not the. I'd be more the Corbin Blue character. Okay, I'm, I'm okay. kind of like the side to the main character in Ooh. this one here. So, you know, I kind of have like a, a side story happening, but it's like it's not Troy and Bella. I is wanted to girl? diss you, but I can't remember the names of any characters in oh, High School okay. Musical. Okay, then yeah, there we are. Sorry. <laughs> Try to let you listeners yeah. down. I know you wanted me to. They were really, they were like, how's he going to get it this week? How's it going to happen? Gonna... No. Oh. No. Oh, Another but... thing oh, that geez. happened this week, okay. too. A hat came in the mail. Oh, that rocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. A hat came in the mail, and the rest of the costume is coming later this week. So I think next week's episode, we'll tell you guys all about. Might even have some pictures. I, I found yeah. some great references that I showed you earlier this week mm-hmm. that I was nerding out about that these even existed and so tomorrow my plan is to 
get that work underway. Okay. In the vague, the vaguest way possible. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Again, this I'm costume. Very excited. Now you guys have two clues. You do. It involves a hat and a tennis racket. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody messaged you guessing it yet? No one's no. talked to me about it at all. Yeah, no. I think it's largely. <laughs> I don't think it's important. I don't think people, people are thinking too much about it. But if you guys want to crack uh, the case, honestly, if anyone were to crack the case, we'll send you a prize. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us now they're invested. Now tell us uh, the line. Tell us what Calder and I are dressing as again. Well, I'll say hats and tennis rackets. If you can tell us what we're dressing as, and you get one guess. After yeah. that, well, I don't know. We're not going to do strict rules, but we'll send you some some hero some clicks related yeah. prizing if you guys can guess our costumes. It'd be so funny. Should Either we tell them what it's for. Does that? Oh sure. I mean, yeah, it's for an anime convention. It's for okay. Nebraska. Which so little bit of a curveball, <laughs> but yeah, it yeah. is for that. But it is yeah, it's for Nebraska. So I'm excited. I I was literally just talking with a friend earlier about like all the Nebraskans, and I've been to every one since 2017 except for oh, like wow. some of their other ones and well you know there's a period there where they didn't have that many so it's really not oh, that many true, you know yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean but yeah so i'm i'm super excited to go back to nebraska and, you know, I it's have my no favorite expectation it's my favorite convention every I'm year excited. yeah i think it's a great way to go into a convention where it's just like i don't know what it is it's new let's just let's just see it but that's what made me happy also played my jefferson bomb team on sunday not in 300 modern and 400 golden so it was a little whatever but it's been a ton of fun making that video was a blast i've had a few people message me that they are playing it and so i absolutely love it so i'm glad people are enjoying that i think it's a hilarious team i think it's a ton of fun to play so it just rules and that also kind of made me happy but let's talk about silver enough enough gift gabbing goofing, goofing off goofing around here silver so, age silver age hero clicks the post Worlds 2024 update, the one that has been memed to death on Facebook of people waiting for this to see. So, how will team building change? For official events, a team must either have no more than 200 points of modern age legal game elements on the main force, or have no more than one game element legal in modern age on their main force. As options for high point characters expand, we're hoping to see players experiment with tent pole and one man army builds. Removing the point cap for teams that just want one big character should lead to new and exciting team builds. So basically that means you can have more than 200 points of modern if it's only one modern element. Dark side. Yeah, Old like man, dark side. Or or- Phoenix, yep, Wolverine. Phoenix Wolverine. I always want to call him Old Man. That's uh, because Old Man Phoenix. He's you know, young, it's, He is young. He's so He's young. Spry. So yeah. How will the sidelines change? In similar veins to the point cap, we are placing restriction on sideline construction. No more than four game elements placed on a player's sideline during force construction may be from sets legal in modern age. Like the point cap rule, this is to ensure that Silver Age maintains a distinct identity from Modern Age. I don't think this is as important with the things that just rotated, honestly. No. Just because all the best sideline stuff is in Silver. You know, True. Trouble Alerts, uh, I guess not the Masters anymore, but a handful of like really good things. Like Some of the just best stuff, period, sideline is Silver Age now. So Because yeah. there's like little to nothing. The sideline is a bit limited, for but modern. there's always new stuff. There you know, is. There's always going to be new stuff, so I think going forward it's a good idea. But yeah, I don't think it'll be like particularly impactful right out the gates here. This is probably one of the craziest changes to me, and that is how mission points are getting changed. So, we are making an adjustment to how mission points function in Silver Age. When we expand Silver Age to 400 points, we had concerns about mission point teams using the expanded point cap to create exploitive combos. To combat this, we've raised the goal of mission points needed to be 30. However, the players are more clever than we had anticipated, and we had to issue several bans this past season to prevent mission points from dominating the format. Still, though, we feel that mission points are a valuable part of the format. They offer objective-based gameplay that can't be found elsewhere, enabling creative and exciting team builds. So rather than remove them from the format entirely, we are changing how they work in Silver Age. If a player would score one or more mission points, they instead score 10 victory points per mission point scored. This both acts to slow down mission point teams, as the effective number of mission points needed to win is now 50, but also opens up a mechanic to other teams to build with, and any team can now dip into mission points and add objective-based gameplay to its victory condition. I feel like this is the first thing where we kind of have to stop and slow down. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta and, talk about this. And kind of discuss this. about this. So instantly my brain kind of went to the old like Wrecker build, where it was like an Alpha Strike, which, which you could also pseudo go for mission points. And now that build is pseudo-intact, 
where it's like, oh, now I can both alpha strike and get some free points while I'm just alpha striking. My brain then instantly also went to, oh, well, I can just be in my starting area, gain yep. mission points, gain victory points, and then I can just hole up in my starting area. Honestly, install. I, I don't love, I don't love this, this change. Yeah, this I change. really am not, not huge on this. I do need to say that I understand where they're coming from on this. Like, it makes sense because, yeah, I remember probably seeing, I don't know, like five to ten posts last year of, oh, yeah, this mission point team can do blah, 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 everything's dead, and then you have 30 mission points, you win. And I know that there was some, hey, like, please don't bring teams like that, you know, come on, like, if you know it's something like that, like, don't play it, which I get, but also, you know, you're playing competitively, so you want to play the yeah. best thing. But just equating it to points, and again, there are different ways. Like Yondu from the Guardian set can roll a D6 and then KO something. You're up on points, make your opponent come to you. We're on smaller maps, so it's easier to get to things. But just passively getting points. Another scenario that came into my head instantly was like time's running down. It's like, okay, well, instead of wasting my turn trying to hit you, I'll just do my mission point stuff. And now I win by 30. Good game. Yeah. That sounds like a really tough scenario. I understand this is like a tough problem to like jump on, you know, to try to tackle, but I I don't think this is it personally. I'm I'm really not a fan of this. I don't like the idea of just taking actions, no dice rolls, no nothing really. Yeah. Just I got points. No chance and I just have victory points. I rolled indigo one, I got like three or four. Yeah. You know, pair that with like tarot cards. Because you can oh. still get tarot on the team, yeah. where now you're getting bonus mission points for that. I don't know how impactful that is, but when points are on the line, an additional mission point, an additional two mission points, that matters a lot. When most figures cost 30 to 50 points, you know, 70 points sometimes, when I can get those points in like two rolls and not have to risk anything necessarily, I don't know. I, I don't think this is a one-to-one -one translation. I'm sure there was a lot of deliberation on this. I don't want to attack anyone for this decision made, but I think that this is very much not a conclusive or final thing. No. This is something to me that screams it is going to be changed because... I feel like this is uh, a, well, let's see how this works. Like, that's exactly what this is. I mean, to me, anyways, that's how yeah. it feels. Where it's like, well, this is one of our options, and I guess this is what we'll go with, and we'll see how it sticks. That's and I, how and it I reads feel to me. like it probably won't stick. I don't know. It just seems way too abusable. And like stalling tactics, turtling tactics just feel too natural with this. I'm not in love with I that mean, style of gameplay. Playing around the clock and being like, all right, I'm just going to roll this D6, two mission points. Okay, good game, man. I won by 10. Yeah. You know, something exactly. like that. Like that that will good. happen and that will feel terrible. Like that is just. Yeah. I'm not saying it's going to happen every game either. But also, like you're saying, just being in a position of like, all right, I'm in my starting area, I'm scoring points. Whereas, like, you know, mission points, there is no point value associated to it until you've won with them. Yeah. So you're very much on a timer. This is a timer that is, like, constantly ticking you, kind of punching you. I know you're not taking damage, but, man, I don't know. And this, okay, so from the pro mission point aspect of it, and you guys know I love mission points. They're I do awesome. Too. They're They're really so fun. Like, it did feel bad when you got 19 mission points, and then you got all your stuff KO'd, and you lost the game. Like, that did feel awful. So mm -hmm. there is always a lot of discourse talking about, like, well, I feel like at the end of the game, mission points should be worth something. At know? the end of the game, sure. Okay, sure. Sure. Like, you know, it's like your point total could be instead of, like, what, you know, maybe what you killed, it's like you get... 10 points per mission point. So it's like, oh, I lost 300 to 190 then. So you get some points for losing rather than it's like, oh, it's 300 to zero and there's nothing to reflect those 19 mission points right. you got. So rather than it being like a passively against my opponent thing, it's like if you were to lose the game, having some points for the work you did would be nice. But just getting points for the work like you're actively doing, I just, it, it doesn't fully make sense to me. I'm interested to see how this will be played out. But honestly... In this format, I just think mission points, no matter how you cut this cake, are going to be abused in some fashion. So oh, yeah. That's why it's like, I Absolutely. don't want to direct this at whoever's making the decisions behind what happened with Silver. I don't want to attack anyone for it. Because I think, ultimately, it's going to be abused. And this is just a new way to abuse it. Yeah. So rather than like, oh yeah, you know, I can cannonball my whole team of Friends of Humanity or whatever it was, <sighs> yeah, and I get right. 30 mission points that in was, a turn. Oh, that was so funny. Now it's like, I have 40 squares uh, of barrier, I have 10 points. Enjoy. Oh my gosh, Hello was so, 
such yeah. an instant. Yeah, hello, that's figure. who it was. Yeah, hell, well, you used Cannonball and you used those guys to die. Yeah, yeah, but it's so funny. So silly. I so, will also say mm-hmm. the way this is worded. Since you gain ten victory points instead, like Peacemaker, the rare Peacemaker does just doesn't work. Yeah, because he's so like I, I would like to see some form of errata or something for Peacemaker in silver because like right now, the main like ways you play him, what his damage power works off of, what his first trait works off of is mission points. And I would like to see it because I love that piece and he's really cool. He's like one of my favorite pieces from BTU. So I would like to see him uh, function. <laughs> That'd be really cool. So I know they don't throw away a ton of different like Silver Age erratas or anything, but I would like to see one for him just so he could be used. You know, they threw a bunch of different erratas for like Captain Venom and stuff. So yeah, we it's do possible. throw a little something Peacemaker's way. So I think ultimately with all of this, I... I just want to say, like, I want mission points to stay in the game. I understand, like, why they can't in the fast that they do, because there are players well beyond my ability that just break them instantly. But this does not feel like the proper fix for it, and I think you're just going to open up a new can of worms with it. I've already seen some discourse online discussing this. People are already talking exactly how to break this. Oh, yeah. I mean, as soon as you give people, you know. like, oh, hey, here are players. This is the format. This is how it works. Well, then the instant conversation is, well, how do I break it? Well, how do I win? Oh, like, an inch? It's a game. Yeah. How do I make this a mine? <laughs> exactly. So we'll see how it goes. A molehill? <laughs> I want to make a mountain out of this thing right now. Ooh. <laughs> All right, guys, so now we're going to get into the the real bread and butter, the ban list here. We're adding a new classification alongside the temporary ban list and ban list. This is the new restricted list that will contain powerful game elements that are not quite oppressive enough to warrant a ban, but nonetheless are concerning to the format. Forces may not include more than one of the game elements on the restricted list, and may only include a single copy of that element. The initial restricted list will include five game elements, but we may expand later. So the current restricted list is Necron, the SNBA, so Carnage Silver Surfer, House of X Maggot, and then both Scott Porters. So Black Shirt, White Shirt are also on the restricted list. So if you play any of these figures, you cannot play any other. So you cannot play a team that has both Scott Porters or Scott Porter and Carnage Surfer. It's or basically like Prime, but they're not, they're not Prime. So it's a Prime within these five. Right. Seeing this list before today where I was like, Necron? Why is Necron here? Yeah. And I played him. I was like, now okay, well, maybe. I still don't think it he's seems, it seems Scott a little Porter, harsh. Maggot, or Carnage yeah. Surfer, though. Yeah, like, Necron what? seems a little harsh on this list. And I think there are some characters that I feel like if I really reflected on it, should be on this list as opposed to, like, the ban list. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not... This Scott is Porter fine. should be banned also. I think, yeah. He's just... Both of these ruins the game. It's just not fun. Just straight <laughs> I think up, everyone has up. had enough of Scott Porter, whether it was one, two. I don't know. Are are Carnage Silver Surfer and Maggot and Necron really at the same shoulder level as like Scott Porter's? Carnage Surfer, I'm just happy to see like limit to one per force more I than love anything. That. Great that's, that's the biggest Great thing. Choice. Is like Carnage Maggot Surfer, two. one per I don't want to play against yeah, four Yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. I Sorry. Do not. Necron, listener, I don't think I want to play against four of them, but I still not the same category. I'm not head. as no, I'm not as weary of Necron as anything but else. Maybe on this you list, can break honestly. them in silver. Maybe you can just heal them up crazy. Is there something we're like missing? Pro- probably. There's probably something where it's like, oh yeah, I can get four Necrons to top dial turn one or something. So and that's probably what wild. it is. Which yeah, that is wild. But again, like being able to re-roll any roll if you have a theme plus one blanket attack. 25 points, he gets a free ring, blah, blah, blah. You guys know the whole Scott Porter song yep. and dance. It's and I get much. he came out recently, so my, my stance here is that he's not banned because he came out last year. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I don't know. It's so. interesting, though, because I, I do think people will choose to play Maggot, Carnage, Silver Surfer, possibly Necron over the Scots. So maybe that does oh, speak against what I'm saying. I can definitely see someone playing like Carnage Surfer over a Scott Porter. I can yeah. definitely see that happen. But also, I think a lot of it may just boil down to, okay, well, I guess I'll put White Shirt Scott on here. Or, yeah. like, put Black Shirt Scott on here. Like, so I can just see that happening he just, a lot He's such well. an auto-include. Oh, so easy. So it's a, it's a recency so thing. That's, yeah. that's my stance. But overall, I think a pretty solid restricted list. Along with this restricted list, they add a temporary ban list. Now, items on the temporary ban list will be removed from the list at a time after the 2025 World Championship. And then they say, they go on to say they will announce when they are removed in future Silver Age update articles. So, temporary ban list. So, in effect, basically until next year sometime, we'll see, is going to be the <laughs> Prime Spider Man from Beyond Amazing. Yes, thank goodness. And then to Ian's <laughs> dismay. <laughs> 
All the A60 chases, Black Skull, oh. Dark Phoenix, King Monger, Doom Supreme, Kit Thanos, Hound. Hound? Hound. What did Hound Thanos, do? Thanos, Goblin, Iron Inquisitor, Thor, Thor, and then Mephisto. Well, I think they're just lumping them all together. Versus Mephisto, have... though, too? Mephisto seems Why unnecessary. Why Mephisto have to go? When, Come on, When man. the rest of them are banned, I feel like Mephisto seems unnecessary. I know that he has uses outside of them, specifically, because he was just used with yeah, them Yeah, dude, the he's got a sweet team-up card. I mean, yeah. come on, dude. You took the entire family out back, bang, and then they must have saw Mephisto see it. He's like, I'm now curious, you got to go, Does too. this mean, so you say team-up card, so that's not the set number on this one. So team-up use... cards, you oh, know, they can't, can't, use, oh, can't do team-up cards either. How great would that have been, where it's like, oh, but you can play him on the team-up card. That would I would have liked that. I actually would have been okay with that, I think. I would have liked that. Yeah, if someone's playing like whatever King Killmonger on a Wakanda theme team or whatever it is, pretty ball. Sure, honestly, yeah. Doom is like lat very. I guess it's also Masters of Evil too, I suppose. But yeah, you can only ever have one team up card per force, anyways. So mm-hmm. then, then it would restrict to these. I actually would have think that would have been a cool change, actually, as opposed to just ban- banning them. I outright. mean, it would have given you opportunity to play these figures, yeah. and like, I really don't think they're as bad if you are limited to one of them as opposed to having like four to swap in. Yeah. And yeah, I understand they just did the sideline restriction, but that's only for modern elements. So I can see these being a worry. I get why these are banned, guys. Let, let oh me, yeah, totally. Let me be clear. But Mephisto seems that seems unfair. Man, well, maybe not unfair is the right word. I don't like it. I want to play. Like, come on, yeah, Mephisto too. <laughs> it's funny. You could play him with other swapping pieces. Sure, he can come back. But it's like, was Mephisto like that abusable? As far as I'm concerned, if you took out, like, King Mm. Killmonger and Iron Inquisitor from this, these guys are, like, an afterthought. They're still very good. So it's really, it's like two offenders. I feel like you could have just taken out a few of these. But, like, come on. You're going to take out Thor and Hound, too? Who's going to play Thor or Hound? No, I think it's pretty fair. Thor, I, I, uh, yeah, at that point, I feel like it's just, well, let's get rid of all of them. The MOE you just know, I think has just, such a ridiculous amount of hate, which is them. fair. It's it's very, fair. very fair. Well-earned hate, Ian. Well-earned hate, they, but I love them, so I'm going to defend uh, them. I, I would like to play them still. The rest <laughs> of the temporary ban list is Wheels of Vengeance, Cathan, all of the stop signs from Batman Team See ya, Up. See good riddance. Uh, I, they did eventually add the Indigo stop sign from Wonder Woman as well. I believe, oh, really? Right? <laughs> yeah, they did eventually like also be like, oh, whoops, that one too. Our bad. And then the Nifty Traffic Barrel is also banned. So I am okay with all these traffic things. Traffic Barrel the can go too. Ban. Cthon is a little A-okay sad. With but that. is a little sad. I, don't I know. guess there's some, some crazy stuff you can do with sure. that. I had somebody message me about that. They're like, do you know what this is about? I'm like, no. No. He's like, well, it's kind of about this. I was like, okay. That makes yeah. sense. The normal ban list. Now, I'll, uh, we'll just add the updated stuff. You know what the normal silver is. No Molecule Man, no Batman. Well, we can also talk about a few things that have come off the ban list as well. Oh, also true. So, added to the ban list was Agatha Harkness and Scarlet Witch. The all-black Necro sort. You know, the, the Disney Plus chases. The ones you the ones you know. Come on, guys. <laughs> Mad Jim Jaspers. The Batman the Animated Series, so a lot of these are kind of weird, but then we'll figure we'll figure it out later. So Batman Animated Series, 013 Catwoman, uh, Spirit of Spider-Man 05 Thug, Dr. Claire Thin, Eternity, The Mockingbird Legacy Card, Ensign Roe Laren, Sasha Banks, Big Show, Senator Robert Kelly, Colossus, Ant-Man, Winter Soldier, Ao, Terra, Alex Wilder, and then Giant Girl. So all of these last couple of ones from Mockingbird on until Giant Girl are all figures that when they die, they move to your opponent's force. And there's just a lot of shenanigans that can happen with that. I think, yes. I think maybe some of them in there maybe don't do that. But most of them that I've just read all kind of go to your opponent's force, even where you're like, but Winter Soldier's like 50, 60 points. But it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, but he goes to your opponent's force. So, But just because there's some weird, wacky stuff where you can make a friendly become opposing... And it's then you're the KOing your own stuff, and KO then you trigger stuff. something, yeah. and then you're winning the game somehow. It's a really easy way to create loopholes. Another interesting one on that is Thug, who he can yeah. pick keywords, right? Yep. So one that I instantly thought of when I saw that, because I was like, oh, why is he banned? I was like, oh, he could be a time stealer. And now oh, it's like, I true. have plus 15 to my very initiative true. roll. Yeah, I do love Thug for that. I get that there's, like, so much stuff you can break, but I do just love that the very first Silver Age set, like, ever is Superior Foes of Spider-Man, mm-hmm. and, like, Thug is awesome. I love Thug. Yeah. He's, like, top... He's never... No, he's not top anything figure of all time, but he rocks. I love yeah. reaching back and being, like, yeah, 10-point 10 uh, 10 Avenger, sure. Thug, Thug's yeah, an dude. Avenger. Like, that's just such a simple ability. That's just so fun. All right, now hear me out on this one. Okay. The Avengers of Infinity, GO23, Eternity. 
was banned in yep. silver. And you might be asking yourself, well, why would he be banned? What well, did he do? Doesn't he also get all the keywords? He gets every keyword. Every keyword, yeah. And so a big concern for him is, oh, well, give him Black Lantern. Now you're healing him past the starting line. Oh. You're ripping his 100-point line to, I think he goes to a, a very overcosted like 600-point line. Pretty much still, all of those had just like some outrageous point line eventually. That is actually I, so funny. What if I told you right now, though, Calder, that there's a figure in Modern who's doing exactly that, who just came out in Masters of Time, Mr. Starro? Mm, Starro. Starro just does that not based on any keyword. So to see Eternity, maybe there's something I'm missing, but to see Eternity banned, that is a strategy that I think I would like to try. That sounds very fun. That is an overcosted 600 point line. And I don't think he's like... I mean, maybe he's like crazy broken, but he's also unique. So that's one that, I don't know, I'd be interested to hear more clarification on. Again, I'm not trying to pick a bone with the people who decided this list. I don't know, I'm maybe just, you are. Maybe I am. Maybe you are. <laughs> Give me your bones. <laughs> Give me your bones. <laughs> no, I, I mean, what it's just threat. like, you can heal Starro to like top dial turn oh, yeah. one. No, and on, easily, and on Dork, it's Madman. I yeah. saw the it's the horror stories talking about how he just healed 15 clicks in one turn. Like, gnarly. That's an interesting enough combo to wow. very quickly mention. Sure. Guardians of the Galaxy um, holiday set Cosmo says, if you're holding an object, you can use supporters free. You play Deadpool and Elsa who give everybody a pizza object if they have a monster keyword. So all your monsters start with an object. They now can use support as free. Starro does his shenanigans to go to the end of his first dial. Support, 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 support. And now you have a 260 point Starro. So, Insane. what I'm saying Gnarly. is, if this is the reason Eternity is banned, maybe we need to maybe we need to bring him back so he can go toe-to-toe with, with Mr. Starro. Starro. Oh, okay. Or ban Starro. Yeah, ban Starro. Probably. Yeah, I mean, probably ban Starro. Starro is, again... Like, I kind of nuts. I honestly think that needs to be an errata. To yeah, I think he needs an errata soon-ish, because he's just kind of nuts. some fashion. I know, right? Yeah, I mean, the guy is... Ugh. He's brutal. He's it's nasty. Just really, it's really nasty. The watch list. So, things that are currently on the watch list but are not banned. There are a few things that have been added. So, before on the watch list were just both Proteuses, cute, and then Peacemaker, Mern, all Trick Arrows, the Prime Elsa Bloodstone, and then the Beholder Iconics is also on the watch list for Silver currently. Not even on the shelves. Interesting. Not even on the shelves yet. Can't even buy this I guy. Think, Can't even play one yet. I think all of those are pretty fair considerations. I think else I think Elsa Bloodstone could have been like banned right away or, you know, restricted to some extent, but I mean, I get that she's probably I don't anyways. want her to be. I think she'll no, be a I, lot of fun. She's she is cool, but I do just feel like, you know, she's very much like the Mad Jim Jaspers and he's banned, you know. Yeah. So, I just feel well, like Well, she's not cheating points in though. She's not oh, just, "Hey, sure. here's your free 30-point gauntlet." That is true. So, that you part have is to true. you have to pay for the stuff with her. I mean, I don't know. I don't think Elsa's quite on the same level. The trick arrows being considered, definitely a solid Super one. Super fair. There are so many ways in silver to just push those to like the absolute extremes. The trick arrows can turn into like little nukes. So They're nuts. I don't know. As far as silver goes, I know there's some states events coming up. I have no idea what I will play for those. But I think overall, I'm not going to be the person looking to absolutely break it. I'll probably be the person looking to just... You know, find a way to make Batman work <laughs> is sure. the way I'm going to yeah. look at it. And we'll see how that goes. But it's daunting. It's scary. I get it. 400 points. Lots of new changes. And then very quickly, some things that came off the ban list. Apocalypse and Genesis are back, which is a little scary. It is. X-Men Swap is pretty nasty. I oh, think yeah. it's going to continue to be. It is back. Ugh. Venom Magneto is back. Yep. Which, Sadly. yeah, uh, he's crazy. Mobility king. Dude's nuts. So... Yeah, he's going to be nuts. Uh, what was the other one that was Zach really Man, good? dude. Zach Man. Carrie, yeah, Carrie yeah. Iron That's Man. not the one I was thinking of. Oh. oh, Sky Tyrant. Sky Tyrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do you think he's as good as he used to be? I think he's scary. I think he's still scary. 13 or 14 for 5 with the Power Gem. Yeah. Full map Even if flurry. he can't, like, Quake Flurry, but still, like, still he can move flurry. 12 after he yeah. hits. I, I still think he's gnarly. Yeah. He's going to be really scary. He's going to be really scary. I may finally get one of him, honestly. No. Like, I've never like I've owned one for like two days before I sold it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I just borrowed it the entire time and I was like, oh, I've got I built a lot of teams of Sky Tyrant. I mean, he's just he's just nasty. He's just good. Yeah, man. So. He's he is brutal. But I think the biggest the biggest question mark for coming back for me there was Genesis and APOC. I get it, but I also just thoroughly do not like those figures. Yeah. 
I just, no, don't like him. I never want to punch him, don't man. Like I just him. don't no. want. I don't want to. But at the very least, people can play their comic accurate X Men teams. And yeah, Silver. <laughs> with That's, Sackman. With Sackman. Yeah. So all right, guys. That's sorry Silver. About that. <laughs> kind of about it. Yeah, sorry for all the people that are like will ask questions like where do I where do I begin with silver? What do I do? Honestly, silver scares me. I don't It's scary. I don't know what I'm going to eventually do for silver cuz there's just so much and I kind of want to be unique and I know there's so much broken stuff that can get broken so easily. So you really do just kind of have to sit down and really you got to think. You got to think like crazy You got to break it down a bit. Think what are the mechanics I'm expecting to play against? What are some of the big nasty ones that have I like, know are going to be there? I have like no idea what what I'm going to play against, honestly. Dude, no clue. Yeah, it's a clean slate, which is interesting, but it's also like building. I mean, I, th- I think I've expressed this on the show where it's like I get about halfway or three fourths through a silver build, and I'm just like, I don't know anymore, Feel and then tired. I give up. Feel <laughs> like what else do I got to do? So much. It's crazy. Like min maxing that extra hundred points is so hard and then it's like i look at my force it's like i have 12 things on this team this is too many things yeah so i think i have to find a way to play some higher point things that don't just die and that's why i like the idea of the one character no point limit from modern it is kind of cool if you want to play like dark side phoenix wolverine maybe i'll make a phoenix wolverine team maybe that's what i'll try to do yeah what could, there you go. What are some cra- give him the time platform so he can get a get out of jail oh free card? Oh my gosh. Okay. That'd be so there you stupid. Go. <laughs> All that matters is that I have a format I can play the emotional modifier in. I love yes, the emotional of course, modifier of course. so much. Ultimate nullifier, uh, you mean? Ultimate yeah, I do mean <laughs> ultimate nullifier. Maybe that's just play the ultimate cobblefire. Caveman that's, Wally that's West, ultimate nullifier. <laughs> yeah, that's, maybe that's maybe that's where we start. With some dice replacement. Oh, uh, that tech is so awesome. Do yeah, maybe that's where we start. Maybe there's a so rally sick. die you can use for ultimate nullifier or something. I know there's one specifically for like X Men. I think. Yeah. With uh, what's his name? Moira. Well, Moira, Moira hands it out. Yeah, Moira hands it out. There's the jeez. He's like, like a white prodigy. Jacket. Prodigy. Yeah. Prodigy. Yeah. Go. So maybe there's something. He's there. good. Okay. There's anyway, something there. Silver yeah. is. Scary. Caveman but, Wally's a warrior, I think. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Caveman? Uh, warrior? Mm-hmm. Huh? Brute? All right, guys. But also, Scott Porter has been opening up some Black Panther stuff. There's all sorts of cool Black Panther stuff going on. Wow. What's up? Jeez, there it is. What, uh, <laughs> what are you excited about? I think easily myself is all the gods stuff. So I think that Thor is really cool. I love that we're seeing that deity base, that like style. Ooh. Not like the deity base itself, but that marbling base print yeah. on other figures that aren't just chases. I think that's really cool. So I particularly really like this Thor. I like the new divine favor tra- trait. Well, it's not new, but it's kind of continuing with the divine favor trait, and it's really cool. And I really like this Ares especially. So, Ares, I mean, I don't know. I like Marvel Ares. I think he's sick. I think he's dope. Yeah, he's like the second uh, coolest was, Ares. No, 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 no. I think he's the coolest Ares, dude. dude. I think, God has to use a I gun. Think he, that, and that rocks. That's sick. What do you mean? That's He's the god of war. War in all forms. That rules. Anyways. This guy has to stop at Gary's gun shop to buy <laughs> ammunition. For his gun, dude. <laughs> Meanwhile, DC Ares, he's just going atomic. He's balling out. He doesn't need any of that. Oh, helmet, better they costume, both... oh, cooler baller. helmet. Yeah, dude. The blue. How? The blue just no, it looks so much no, better. I the think, classic. I think Marvel Ares, Ares has a cooler helmet, man. If there's anything to weigh in on with this episode, guys. It's it's who's the cooler Aries? Is it Marvel or is it DC? I think Marvel Aries is way cooler, Please, man. Let, actually, let us know. This actually, is, this let is us a know. And don't come at me with your century did this to Marvel Aries. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Okay? Oh, well, let's, huh. we're probably going to hear a little oh, bit about Probably going to hear about it. The way I look at it, anyways. DC is Aries, Marvel is ours. <laughs> <That's messed up. laughs> anyways uh this aries continues the from olympus style of traits that poseidon have with aries armory so he has this really cool cylon active and poseidon's is when someone uses quake aries is off of like when someone uses blades claws fangs which is really cool they get a target all adjacent opposing characters with the attack and if they do they must use blades claws fangs for that attack and they roll a separate d6 for each hit character uh, when they do, if Ares is on the map, the minimum result is the character's printed damage plus one. And Ares really good. versus like Poseidon, Ares is actually like stupid cheap. He's 55 mm-hmm. points, but I just think he's, I don't know. Like the dial, I look at it and I'm like, I guess that is probably 55 points. I don't, it, but it also seems like just way too solid for 55 points somehow. You know, like he's not like a crazy good like main attacker, but he's just got like really good reducers and it's kind of long. So it just seems really solid, especially for like, 
Is he a rare? He's, He's a, like a rare. rare. Yeah, for yeah. a rare, it seems like really good. So I really like this area. I love a lot. seeing sideline actives on rares. Make sideline active more accessible. This 100%. is a really good one. Like yeah. literally, if you're playing a blades figure, it's so. like you might as well. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, that's how I feel about Poseidon, where it's like, oh, every time I play the Jurassic League, I just might as well play Poseidon. There's no mm-hmm. reason not to. You never know. So, yeah, I love this Ares. I think he's going to be a ton of fun. And again, like, yeah, you're playing Blades. Put him on every single team. Like, this just rocks. So, I like him a lot. What are you, what's been the favorite thing you've seen so far in Black Ooh, Panther? Oh, man. I, I'm really digging the Miles Morales rare. I think he's really, really solid. The sculpt is phenomenal. The little lightning coming off his hands. Traded stealth, opposing characters can't draw a line of fire to him if he's adjacent or occupying a non-debris terrain marker. He's got precision strike too, and when he hits, he gets to hand out tokens. Triple target, combat yeah. reflexes, super senses, Spider-Man TA, the champion's keyword is back, which is always fun. He's secret identity, which is back as well. That's crazy cool. I yeah. really hope we get to see more secret identity stuff, because I, I really like that. I think I like there's potential lot. in the new Spider-Man set. Like, we saw the... It's probably... I mean, maybe it is, but it's like the when he's like half lizard and then full lizard. Oh, Kurt that Connors, could be something a Kurt similar. Connors secret identity yeah. to lizard. That could be kind of neat. Okay. Maybe there's something there. Maybe it's like, you know, they split the dials. Maybe he like promotes into him. There's a million things you could do with that. But yeah. it does seem like there's potential for secret identity to return more. And so I really like this. I think both his lines are fantastic. 75 or 40. Do I think this is going to be like the best figure ever? Not exactly, but it's just one that I'm really excited to play. Yeah, but he's I fun. Think somebody That's all that matters. who can stand on his own in pulp, like something I'd consider playing in pulp, absolutely. Just great values. Outwit's always nice, hypersonic. Or if you just need a cheap 40 point beat stick, boom, this is your guy. And yeah, it just absolutely. has a solid slew of keywords to work with. So I, I really like him. Yeah, just automatically having 50 50 senses, which I would really like them to stop doing on Spider Man pieces. It's <laughs> Cape just. Man, uh, Wally. Yeah, Wales. yeah. Keep it up. Love you, Cape Man Wally. Also, but, Uncommon Shuri. I know. Oh, we we've talked her about forever. her quite a bit, but yeah, yeah she I is just got to shout her out. Yeah, she, she seems, is insane. She seems so good for an Uncommon. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be putting that piece on a ton of teams. Mm. Also, just shout out, I love seeing Phil Coulson. Love Phil. I mean, like Avengers fan favorite, Agents of Shield fan favorite character. Love Phil Coulson. Don't know why he's Squadron Supreme for some reason. I think he's alluded to being a bad guy, but nah, not my Phil Coulson. My Phil Coulson, he's a hero. He's a go. Bit of a fashionista. You know, he's got his suit is sunglasses. Supreme. Oh, oh, geez. That's your, okay. I was <laughs> he's like, waiting in supreme. line at, at the local Shields. Yeah, we're gonna start supreme giving the Squadron drug. Supreme keyword to anybody that we just think is kind of a kind drip guy. Fly, you know, <laughs> kind of fly. <laughs> Just anybody that I think maybe um you know shop supreme gets those hot drops yeah, you know, right away. pretty much that's what we're going killing the resale for. market you know Dude. just out there murdering you think he's on StockX? Just he's on flipping, <laughs> flipping, flipping, flipping shoes. Yeah, dude. That's if there's the Phil that's, Coates, that's Colson f- I know, it's the one on StockX. <laughs> oh my gosh! The Nick Fury and Goose too. I that always love when, cool they, piece. when they call back uh, bystanders. Uh. And in this case, it is the goose bystander from, we saw it way, way back in Captain America and the Avengers. The Captain Marvel made it with some flurry, plasticity, giant reach two. It's a great bystander. But also just seeing like one bystander generation, I love. Two, like kind of the movie Nick Fury and Goose. Yeah. It's fun. It is cool. Some shield TAs coming back. He gets animal keyword, which is hilarious. Mm. Traded mastermind and stealth, which I do love. And then he also has the damage power that I'm picking you up now, which is free. Choose an opposing character within range and line of fire. That character's combat values can't be positively modified until your next turn. Once per turn, when Nick Fury and Goose carries a friendly character named Goose, after resolution, Goose may make an attack. So he gets to mobilize his own bystander, gets to shut off some values. It just seems pretty solid. I, I like this figure. And Marvel has finally, I guess, admitted, like, okay. Because the original bystander was, like, Chewy. And Marvel's finally been like, okay, oh, yeah, it, right. is, it is Goose. Mm. We are going to lean into the movie side of things and call it Goose now. Or call the the flirting Goose. So, yeah. No, it is really cool. I do like the little shield sub theme. I'm loving the gods. It's pretty neat. Been pretty neat set so far. We haven't seen a chase or anything crazy yet. So, we'll just... Keep on waiting and seeing. We'll probably we're gonna do a huge, obviously, set review and everything else, guys, for Black Panther. So, keeping it a little light this episode. 
But now just to kind of round out the episode here, we got a few questions for the show. You can ask questions by going to our Patreon. If you already are a Patreon supporter, then thank you so much for your support. Everything that we do here at Dial H is just thanks to all you guys that support the show. So we really appreciate that. You can go to patreon.com slash dial H podcast. If you are a Patreon member of about $5 or more, then you get access to Discord, early videos, exclusive videos that will just never be public, and you get to see them, which is really cool, which is mostly a lot of fun gameplay and a few other like skits and things, but a lot of exclusive and really cool content is available over on our Discord, as well as you just get to talk to a lot of really cool people. We have a phenomenal Discord community. I absolutely love everybody in it, and it's just a ton of fun seeing people join general chat, talking team builds, talking you know Black Panther spoilers, whatever, sharing memes, having a good time. So... This is questions from them. Super Cab asks, talking primes, would you rather have, oh, it's talking prime shows, excuse me, talking like Amazon prime shows. Would you rather have Critical Role, The Boys, or Invincible in clicks? Oh, this is so easy for me. No brainer. Yeah, it's Invincible. Invincible. Yeah, 100% Invincible. I've not seen Critical Role. I've never listened to Critical Role. Uh, That's just like the... D&D podcast by Matt Mercer. That's all I know about it. Cool for them. They're not my favorite D&D podcast. Shout out Adventure Zone. Um, but then like, yeah, Invincible over the boys every single day of the week. Like The over boys everything. Is, is played out. Yeah, I'm just tired. We won't get into that. That's yeah, a whole nother we're segment. We're just not. But the boys is just, I think it became what it sought out and claimed yeah. to hate. It's just, it's going on too long. I just don't want those in Heroclix, honestly. Just no. don't want, I don't want those people, <laughs> those characters in Heroclix. Don't love them. Invincible's sweet, though. Invincible's like classic comic book, and it's been in Heroclix before, and I would love to see it make a return. To see like an Invincible like covered in blood, like after he got <sighs> beaten, that would, would be rock. such, like in the crater too, sick. would be a really, really cool Dude, and an Omni-Man, where it's like the face Omni-Man, and then like the one where he's like, got his like chest is all messed up because of like Red Rush, like it's him oh, killing, yeah. killing the whatever, Guardians of the Globe, Omni-Man, that would rock, There'd where he's just so like one-man cool army beast. There, yeah, there's so much cool stuff you do, Invincible. Oh my gosh, Alan Ooh. the Alien. Be really oh, he's fun. so fun. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's Invincible. Again, he can have like Ten a depowered version, like a normal Alan, and yeah. like a repowered version when he comes back. Yeah. Alex the Enchanter asks each of you, please pick one unique effect, whether it be a unique ability modifier or a unique prime ring that you wish could be done in multiples, and don't just say something like sixteen Scott Porters. So I think he's saying like a unique effect is like a prime, right? Or just like oh, a unique sure. modifier, whatever. So something that'd be fun, honestly, playing like a bunch of Steves would be fun. But they kind of already stack, so there's not really a point to, but it would just oh, be kinda sure. it'd just be kinda cute, you know? What else is there? Something I don't know. A bunch to... of Kevins, kinda nuts. Oh my gosh, right? Hmm. Uh the rare supergirl where every time you punch me I heal four. Oh jeez. Oh four my gosh, that would be nuts. <laughs> so yeah, he's saying something that would break the game, redefine the meta, this one's and then so, so, just, so we've just been kind of doing multiple projects stuff that's fun. Oh yeah. Oh my. Ugh. I'll throw two of your pieces in the car. I mean, just two of them, maybe three. Just play them that on different just, dials. That actually, it's just multiple miserable. Multiple predegatons. Ugh. Uh, multiple prime kingpins would be a lot of fun. Just plus three statting, <sighs> everything would be hilarious. That'd be so sick. Oh, to do. Let's see. Multiple prime Green Lantern Batman would be kind of cool. Sure. Because then it's like I'll put a smoke under you, 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 and lock down your whole team. Uh, multiple prime destroyers Think. would be gross. That would be nasty. Calling in six destroyers. Ugh. <laughs> oh, take a shower. That would be so hilarious. gross. Multiple mad gyms would actually be like probably probably pretty game breaking. Just broken. Just all the free and a headache. You get, and then yeah, just multi swapping equipment. Yeah. Imagine Swap how many this, Red Wing bystanders you could get. <laughs> that would got a rule. That'd be really funny. Uh, there's, ew, there's gross, a lot. dude. I mean, geez, there are so many things where it's like if you could have mul- I mean, multiple Prime Spider Man would be like, dude, you're going to lose. Playing multiple like this. Prime Flashes. Reverse, Reverse Flash? Flashes would be mm, nasty. Oh, gnarly. That would kind of rock. That would kind of rule. Multiple That's how you could lose some Multiple Commissioners from Wonder Woman 8. Oh, geez. Actually, yeah. Rookie here, rookie Good here. Good point. It'd be kind of like playing. Jason Wingard. I miss him. I miss my Every boy. Day, I, I miss, miss Jason, Jason Wingard so much. Yeah, free, that's right. Free Jason. If there's He's one still thing to take away from this episode, Silver Age Band list, list. Hashtag free Jason. Free Jason. Free it's Jason. a good idea. It is. No, it is a good idea. <laughs> no, Jason Wingard should be legal in silver. It's a good idea. I promise. I don't even get why he's banned. Yeah, I don't even get it either, dude. Honestly, he has why. willpower, smoke cloud. Yeah, How willpower, banned, smoke cloud, dude? sidestep, shape change. Those yeah. are ignore, awful. Ignore the text on his card. Why yeah, don't look banned? at anything else. Look at his powers. Top dial. That's all he's got. Yeah, he's dude. a seventeen willpower, dude. Eighteen. Eighteen. Come on. Wow, that was disrespectful. I'm so sorry. So he's like an eighteen was. willpower. Mm-hmm. He's got one damage. Ugh. 
Yeah, I know. What's, what, he, what's he doing? Seventy-five points yeah, on that? Come on. come on, we gotta we gotta put our we gotta take our glasses Dude, off. Dude, I have like an, looking at the. Card. I have like an itch to play Jason Wingard right now. I have Actually, an itch so to bad. Buy six <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Alex asks on a scale of Javier Bays to Shohei Otani. Otani. How good is Calder at baseball? And then so yes, Shohei Otani is. Like, I don't know who these people are. Well, Shohei Otani right now is currently like in debate for like the best baseball player of all time. Okay, like he has like over fifty home runs and fifty stolen bases, which means that he's Javier also a pitcher. I don't know who awful. that guy is. He's got to be trash. He must though. be trash because if it's on a scale of to like one of the best of all time, this dude just must be awful. <laughs> Let's look him up. Not Javier Bardo. Baseball shortstop. I don't know. How do I find that he's do, bad? Where do I, I don't know. know. <laughs> what are these are his stats? Do these look good? Do these look good to you? He must he must be trash. We'll just assume. We'll he's just bad. assume he's bad. Yeah. You know, I would I would say Calder is Bartolo Colon. That still means nothing no, to I me. Know, I don't. <laughs> he's like he's a chubby like, guy. Oh uh, wow, <laughs> that's tough. No, but he would he would Fine. hit an occasional home run and I'm, hilarious. Okay, sure. The bases. There you go. That's no. that's how I feel. So like we did do one shot on the baseball show uh, on the baseball league where I had to like just smoke a baseball pretty much. I won't lie, a few of them went a little far to the left, a little far to the right. That's the way it goes. But I did like cut one down the middle and it did hit the back fence. So nice. if I could do that consistently, maybe I would say talk a little bit more. But that was like again, that was like two I'm shots so I bad did that. At baseball man, I can't. I have no room to talk. It's like probably the sport I am the worst at is baseball. Oh, I can't. I can't hit a ball. Oh really? Like it's hard. Don't get me wrong. I was like, dang, this is actually harder than form, I thought it was going to be. My mechanics terrible. Like, yeah, I'm flat out. Like I'm bad at baseball. Long. Just never made sense to me. Yeah, sure. I don't know. No, yeah, so so Calder. I'll Calder, take, out of everybody on the guy. show of the pictures I've seen, looks the most like he plays baseball. <laughs> I appreciate that. Should wear like my baseball jersey. I did do the baseball skit a little earlier this year with the rotation. That was pretty fun. But yeah, just come into the next rehearsal singing "Damn Yankees." Damn, you gotta have heart. All you really need is heart. That would be so good. (laughs) And then Wesley R asks, "How did Arachnite survive the bench slap?" I don't think he needed to. I don't think he needed. Like he was like a great attacker, a solid piece. mm Hmm. I don't think he need to be benched. I don't think so either. I he also was never think... such a. I mean, I don't know. He was saw him way more play recently, but he was never such a staple that you were terribly, terribly worried about Arachnite. Yeah, I think a lot of it too. Like, if he is that, which I don't think he is, but you know, if people do think he is that, I think the psychology behind Arachnite is that people love playing him. Yeah, I mean, truly, like one of the most fun figures. As far as, like, if I'm playing competitively, I think one of the times I've enjoyed it the most it was playing Arachnite. He just, he looks cool, plays cool, he's just so fun. So, I don't I don't really think he's ban-worthy, though. I think there's mechanics that are much more abusable than Arachnite. So, I don't know. I just, I don't think he's he's necessary for that. Yeah, I don't, I don't really think so either. I don't think he's, like, terribly needs to get banned or anything. So... He then asks, if you were attending the Red, White, and Clicks event in Indiana on Veterans Day weekend, what would your 300 Modern team be? So basically, what would you be looking at 300 Modern? Five shifting focus, but I'm kidding. There it is. <laughs> Simple ass. Simple no, enough. It would definitely be probably some variation of the two shifting focus Batman or three shifting focus Batman team that uh, Devin built. Something that's centered around them, again, I just haven't fully hatched that plan. I've come up with different slants on it, but nothing that I've like really really been dead set on it's something that i feel like i need to put pen to paper more on i need to practice it more to fully understand the mechanics of it but i will say shifting into like double noir batman and turning off two powers oh dude it's so so gnarly it's so so good and it's like yeah no quake no flurry screw you (laughs) so it's just like you're not you're not getting through me um I don't know, though. As far as like a full team goes with everything, I also really am enjoying Constantine. I got to play him today as well, so I'd maybe consider nice. including him. But then I think the no-brainer, I mean, you guys have heard us talk about him at nauseum. I think if I was really like, I'm going to go there, I'm going to play to win, I'd probably play an animal-themed team that would look something like Ultra Humanite, Flash Raptor, uh, Deadpool Hit Monkey with the Trick Arrows, uh, Perdegaton... And then from there, you have a few different options. Maybe throw on Man-Thing, 
Probably Detective Chimp for some perplex and outwit. Maybe the Ellie one if you want the prob and defend. Some shell of that. It's one that I haven't finished, but that is another team that just feels like crazy, crazy nasty. So yeah, probably Animal is what I'd end up playing if I was going there to win. And yeah, you guys know I'm all about the uh, the old Jefferson bomb. I'm ready to drop lightning on fools. This is all. I literally don't know if I'm gonna play anything differently for the next few weeks at our locals. I think I might keep running basically the exact same team for the next like couple of weeks. I I absolutely love the Jefferson bomb. It's been a ton of fun. So that's what I'd be running. Also, speaking of the Red, White, and Clicks events, like you said, it's going to be Veterans Day weekend. So that's coming up here in November. About a, yeah, about a month away now. So really quickly, uh, Wesley did send us the prizing, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to run down some of the modern prizing for those that might be interested in the event. So there's a lot of really cool fellowship prizing. So there's a lot of good LEs, Battle Gnomes, Old King Thor, Cyclopses, Calibax, all that great stuff. Participation for modern is a Brood, a Parademon, and Pegasus Cap, which is pretty gnarly participation. So I really, really love that. 9th through 16th is going to get a booster, Steppenwolf, Calabac, Cyclops, Old King Thor, Iceman, Venom God, and Superman. So again, really well prized out. 9th through 16th place. 5th and 8th is two boosters. So of what set? I assume Black Panther. I don't know what it is. They just say two boosters. Steppenwolf, Calabac, Cyclops, Battle Gnome, Old King Thor, Iceman, Venom God, and Superman. 3rd and 4th get five boosters with the same LEs. 2nd is going to get a full brick. Butterfly and Eagly, <laughs> that's kind of cute. Black Panther Chase, I don't know if that means like just a Black it's Panther a Chase, it's Chase Booster. Booster, okay. And then a Deadpool Weapon X Chase Booster as well for second. And then again, the same LEs that we've been saying. And then first is going to get the exact same prizes, but a case instead of a brick, which is pretty dang solid. And then teams, these are all times three for prizing, prized out to fourth place, where they get two boosters, Eagly or Butterfly. And then a second is going to get five boosters, Jurassic Booster, a Deadpool Weapon X Chase Booster, and then first is going to get a Brick, Jurassic Booster, and then Black Panther Chase Booster stuff. So they also have a few things for extra raffles and giveaways, which is really cool, but that is pretty much the prize structure breakdown for the Red, White, and Clicks event. So go check that out. That is in Indiana. Looks like a fun time. Looks like a blast. But that is going to be everything for this episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks. Ian, do you have any shout-outs? Anything you want to do before we go? good oh well you know with scott porter finishing up his Mm. unboxing this week there's probably one from us coming soon as well i would imagine tell there yeah i'd imagine that happens sometime yeah yeah be on your toes folks just be on the lookout round 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 there it is (laughs) black panther Really quickly, as far as a uh, player of the week goes this week, guys, I want to shout out. I'm going to butcher your name, so I apologize. But Lioj and Z- Aznita, I want to say. But he made a great post on Sunday kind of talking about all of the different like content that had been coming out as far as like Hero Clicks goes. And he was like, I went and watched it all. And that included like our video, the like Coffee and Clicks video, like a bunch of other videos, which is really cool. So just someone like that being like, hey, all you content creators, you're doing a phenomenal job. I'm enjoying all the content. I think that's really positive in the community. And, you know, I see you comment on a lot of things and interact with the community. So you're going to be this week's Player of the Week, my man. I really appreciate it, and I think you're doing a great thing. But Shouting out the shout-out. Absolutely. Yeah, shout-out the shout-out. Right back mm-hmm. at you, my man. Real recognize real, if you will. Yes. Absolutely. Well, guys, like always, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And of course, if you want to get Hero Clicks straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com using code DIALH10 for 10% off your orders that don't include pre-orders, iconics, or any other specialty promotions. Guys, for all your Hero Clicks <laughs> podcasts, videos, and more, make sure you dial H. And like always, happy trails. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on There's your a cap. Left. There's a cap. A Captain America. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on There's your left. There's a shield. Left. There's a shield. And it's on your left. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on your when left. When he's on your left. He's on your left, he's Captain America on your left.